Hey folks, welcome to another video. Today I'm out and about on another bike review. A bike that I've been wanting to ride for about, uh, well, about a year actually, since I last rode its bigger, more expensive brother. This is the Triumph Tiger 850 Sport. It's sort of a, uh, well you can think of it as a cut down, back to basics version of the Tiger 900 if you like, but that's doing it a little bit of a disservice I think. Anyway, stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think of it. So this is uh, my absolute first ride on the Tiger 850 Sport. A bike that when it came out uh, a few months back, I think about uh, November of last year it was first released, I was absolutely chuffed to hear what uh, Triumph have done because uh, this time last year I actually had on long term loan during our first Covid lockdown, I had the uh, Tiger 900 GT Pro which is the sort of top of the range road focus bike which I really loved and really rated. In fact. I rated it one of my best bikes of 2020 in my uh, top five video uh, that I did that year. But one of the things I did say about it was that I thought, uh, you know, all the sort of basic stuff about the bike was good, the, the comfort, the way it sounded, the way it rode, etc. But some of the electronics maybe weren't required and it made the bike expensive. And I said it would be great if there was a cheaper version of the bike that was kind of back to basics. And now, I'm not saying that Triumph have listened to me, but that's exactly what they've done with the 850 Sport. They basically provide a bike that has pretty much all the good stuff about the Tiger 900, but it's just cut out some of those extra features and functions that for me personally, I'm not too, too bothered about. Things like um, connectivity on the TFT, things like a bigger TFT, and more sophisticated electronics generally. This bike doesn't come with the IMU, so it doesn't have lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control, although of course it does have ABS and traction control. It's just the more basic type. But for me, I'm quite happy with that. At the end of the day, you end up getting a bike that costs sub 10 grand. And not just a bit sub 10 grand, this bike comes in at 9,300 pounds. Which I think is amazing value for this sort of bike. So I hope you can hear me okay, I've just uh, mounted the microphone in this helmet, I haven't used this helmet for a while, for vlogging purposes. I want to wear it on this bike to see how it works in concert with the screen. So anyway, I hope the mic is positioned and you can hear me okay. But in terms of this screen and the wind protection, pretty good actually, I'm feeling alright. I've got a little bit of uh, wind hitting the very top of my helmet, but it's not turbulent at this speed. This screen's got an excellent adjuster by the way, look, you just push it and down it goes and push it and up it goes. Again, simple, but sometimes simple is just best, isn't it? Oh look, I got my first white van of the day. Been on the bike all of five minutes. It was clear, so have a little cheeky overtake. Let's see how she goes. Well, <laughs> she goes absolutely fine, no issue overtaking and quickly up to uh, fast speeds let's say because one of the other changes of this bike over the more expensive 900 version is the fact this has got a slightly different tune more of a road tune if you like this bike puts out uh, I think about 84 brake horsepower I'll go through the detailed specs in a minute when we do the walk around whereas the Tiger 900 puts out something like 94 so 10 bhp different but uh, and the torque on this is slightly less but the difference is even though the engine is basically the same the difference is this tune on this is a little bit lower down so you get the grunt and you get the higher power lower down in the rev range so actually for road riding it's it's arguably better now it was as i say about a year ago that i rode the 900 so i'd be lying if i told you i could tell the difference between this and the 900 this feels perfectly adequate to me you do not need more power than this on the road i can tell you so don't let that uh, lower horse fa uh, horsepower and lower torque figures put you off or indeed the fact that they call it an 850 it's still the 888cc engine the same engine effectively as in the 900 I think as I said it's doing the bike a bit of a disservice because I think it makes it sound like a lesser bike and it's only lesser in the fact that you paid less for it I think it's a probably a wiser bike it should be called the Tiger 850 Clever handling is beautiful on here so let's go through some basic stuff in case you've not come across the Tiger family before. What's the comfort like? Well, it's really, really nice. The seat on this is particularly comfortable actually. Nicely padded, 
the seating position itself, of course I'm upright, feels exactly the same as my GS in terms of the uh, riding position. You can ride on this all day long. I'm not leaning forward. Uh, my feet are tucked up a little bit of an acute angle, but not, not in a particularly sporty position. Why, again, Triumph decided to call this a sport, I don't know, because it's not a sporty bike particularly. But it is an all day long comfortable bike. Handlebars are nice and wide. And the bike itself feels quite wide between my legs, who were misses. It is a triple, so I suppose that's uh, going to be wider than uh, an equivalent twin. But that has the effect of uh, being nice to grip with your legs when you're on the corners. So comfort wise, absolutely no issue on here. The suspension, again I'll go through the details of it, it's Marzocchi on here. And it just seems perfectly set for me, I'm uh, 11 stone. And it just, you know, I wouldn't want to tinker with it. I don't think it's adjustable, as I say, we'll have a look in a sec. But I wouldn't want need to adjust it anyway. It feels great on these really bumpy English roads. Let's just try the front brake. Our oh, front brake is excellent. Let's just try the rear, nothing behind me. Actually the rear is pretty good as well, just felt the ABS kicking a little bit there on the rear. But pretty good brakes on here. The noise of the bikes, have a listen. Sounds nice and grunty, don't want to get too carried away, it's slow down again. And even at slow speeds, here we are, look, 32 miles an hour in third. There's no judderiness or it doesn't feel like, you know, it's struggling in any way. Nice at slow speeds, sounds good. It's got that new firing order on this triple. Well, I say new firing order. It's been around now, as I say, for well over a year. But uh, Triumph have tried to make this engine sound more twin-like and less triply. And it ends up sounding sort of a cross between the two, as you'd imagine. It's still nice and smooth, though. I like this engine. It's a... Uh, it's a great compromise between grunt of a twin and the smoothness of a four-cylinder bike. Handling is lovely. It feels nice and light. I mean, it's not uh, a particularly light bike, nor is it particularly heavy. Again, I'll go through the specs. I can't remember what the weight is off the top of my head, but uh, it's not particularly heavy, but it feels, it feels light in terms of handling. You can really chuck it about. Mirrors seem to work nice and well, they're quite storky looking, not my favourite looking mirrors, but they certainly work okay, no vibration, good view over the back, I'm not looking at my shoulders or anything. And the instrumentation and the switch gear on here, nice and simple, which is one of the things I like about it. We've got, I think it's a 5 inch TFT, slightly smaller than the 900, it's got everything you need on it, nothing else. It has got a proper fuel gauge, I'm pleased to say, and of course, uh, you can change that display to various layouts. I'm not a big fan of Trump TFTs. This is, I would argue, better than the one that's fitted on the big Scrambler and the uh, Rocket 3. I'm still not a big fan of this TFT. The one on the uh, Trident is much nicer, but there we go. Another thing I don't like about it is the fact you control it by this little joystick knob here. I've complained about these before on Trump, so I just find it a little bit fiddly when you're on the move. It's probably a matter of getting used to it. Let's just have a little go. Actually, it's Maybe it's not that bad and maybe you just need to get used to it, but I'd rather just four buttons like they have on the Trident. Alrighty, let's uh, head into the station up here. This is the uh, Buckinghamshire town of Wendover I'm coming to. Train station's just here. Hopefully there'll be a load of space in the train station. I could do the walk around. Talk you through the spec in the usual way. Ooh, let's just try standing up. It was nice and balanced. Stood up. Oh, that was the entrance I just missed. Can I get in down here? Oh, sneak down there. That'll do. Let's stick her over here so I can get a bit of a shot maybe in front of this green hedge. That'll do nicely, what is the brake there, got a bit of dive on the old brakes, on the uh, forks there, which I'm not used to coming from the GS, which has the funny front suspension, this obviously has standard telescopic fork type suspension. Alright, it's got a key, I love that, not keyless. Right, let's show you this bike then. 
One of the things I do like about this Tiger Sport is it's actually quite a nice colour. Look, this one's the blue one, obviously, or blue and grey. Lovely finish quality on this, as typical Triumph, even though this is a more budget-end bike. The fit and finish on this is beautiful. I do like this blue. I think it comes in red as well. Uh, Triumph, I'm always complaining that they don't do very imaginative colours. Well, like this one, I think, absolutely looks lovely. Anyway, let me get the other camera out and the spec, and I'll talk you through it in the usual way. OK, so uh, here she goes then, the uh, Tiger... 850 Sport, uh, handsome looking bike I think, I particularly like what they've done with the lights for the uh, 2021 models, they sort of slimmed them down a bit and I think it looks good at the front and as I say that colour, really really nice on here, let me just pick out a couple of things before we go through the specs, so let me just show you the switch gear a bit closer, so very simple as I say, uh, well, I haven't ridden it at night yet, so I don't know if this is backlit or not. I suspect not, but we'll find out. There's that uh, little joystick that I was talking about that I find a little bit fiddly. Uh, we've got a mode switch. It's just got uh, rain and road modes on this, which I think is brilliant. Everything else is very uh, straightforward and basic. There's that brilliant adjuster that I showed you on the screen as well. Uh, lovely graphics on here. There's the engine, very nice indeed. Anyway, we'll have a look around as we go around. So let's talk you through the spec then. So the engine, 888cc triple, as I mentioned. Same as on its uh, namesake, the Tiger 900. Puts out 84 brake horsepower at 8,500 RPM. The 900 puts out 93.9 at 8,750. Uh, the thing with this one is it can be restricted to A2 license holders as well. So, uh, you know, it's a candidate for your first big bike, maybe. Torque-wise, 82 Newton meters at 6,500 RPM. And again, the Tiger 900... That, ha that has 87, so 5 Newton metres more at 7250, so a little bit higher up the rev range, as I say, so that explains this sort of road tune. Let's have a look at those brakes on here that I found so good. So we've got twin discs at the front with Brembos, and they look like they're the uh, M50 monoblocks, don't they? Uh, proper nice brakes on there. Those discs, 320 mil uh, discs as well. Actually, they're Stylemas, sorry, what am I talking about? They're even better. Uh, moving on, down the back end, one of those Bybre calipers, bollocks a bit single, on a... Uh, 255mm disc works really really well suspension i mentioned it was marzocchi i think it's fairly basic actually but there we go it says marzocchi on it but it works absolutely fine at the back i said uh, there was no adjustment but in fact there is look there's a preload adjuster there uh, for the rear suspension as well seat height on here lovely and low 810 millimeters adjustable up to 830 so probably medium height but uh, i'm a medium size fella it works for me get my feet flat on the deck weight of this 192 kilograms dry and the fuel tank on here takes 20 litres so if you fill that up what's that gonna that's gonna be probably 15 kilograms so you're probably looking at something like 207 kilograms wet that's my guess uh, which is relatively light for this style of bike actually electronics wise as i say they've just given you what you need on here so basic abs and traction control does have led lights as you can uh, possibly see which uh, are all very nice those are the same lights as on my speed twin i think and at the front already mentioned i like the look of these lights but leds all around and i will get to test those in the dark at some point and bring you another video on that uh five inch tft screen road and r uh, rain rider modes which are all you need let's face it uh price starts at 9300 uh the tiger 900 starts at 11400 or if you want the rally pro which is the all bells and whistles one that's 13.4 so this is uh basically four grand cheaper than the top of the range tiger 900 so that's a significant saving on a bike at this price you can get all sorts of stuff for it luggage pack that's about 1300 quid um, and there are 60 genuine triumph accessories available including things like heated grips <coughs> comfort seat and so on and color wise it is indeed available in this blue or a red um, so there we go very nice just in terms of differences again with say the 900 rally pro which is the top of the range one that one would have a seven inch tft the my trump connectivity not bothered about that uh, adjustable show suspension on that i'm not worried about that lean angle abs and traction i'm not bothered about that off-road tires quick shifter that would be handy uh, additional riding modes who cares tpms no take it or leave it uh, heated seat would be nice so yeah you're getting some more more bells and whistles for the uh, more expensive bike but I'm not sure I would miss any of those, to be honest. In terms of competition, I think you're looking at Multistrada 950, probably BMW F750, maybe V-Strom. We're in that sort of territory. And maybe the new Yamaha Tracer 9 as well. Uh, I haven't ridden all of those bikes, but I have to say, I really do like the uh, the Tiger 850 Sport. Alrighty then. So, uh, yeah, that's the spec. Let's jump on and ride some more. Alrighty. 
So this bike I'm really pleased to say is my uh, latest uh, longer term loans from Triumph. So uh, if you are interested in the Tiger 850 Sport, stick around and stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to be bringing you more videos on this, particularly my in-depth review once I've been riding it for a, a couple of weeks so I can learn some lessons on her. All right, let's get her fired up then. Normal Triumph, you have to hold the uh, clutch in to start her. In we go, right. I didn't mention the gearbox or the clutch actually as I was talking about the bike. Let me just, oh actually while we're in here, let's just try the turning circle. So down the middle of here. First gear, nice and slow, nothing coming. Oh, put your foot down. Pretty good turning circle actually, within two spaces look. No prizes at Jim Carner, but uh, <laughs> yeah, quite a nice tight turning circle, so no problem there. Yeah, the gearbox. Feels fine. A little bit clunky actually, might because this is a new bike. Well, absolutely not an issue. I've not noticed any you missed gears or false neutrals or anything like that thus far. I'm hoping during my time with the bike with the bike I might be able to actually take her off-road as well because uh, frequently when I have bikes for loan that do have some sort of off-road capability, even though as I say this is mainly road focused. I don't take them off-road because I'm afraid of dropping them. But in the case of this one, it does feel light and easy to handle. I feel pretty confident on this, so I think I'll be uh, on a you know basic green lane be absolutely fine. A lovely day to be out on the bike. It doesn't look very uh, sunny or anything. It's a bit of a grey cloudy day, but it's uh, 20 degrees out. Just perfect riding temperatures. The tyres on here, by the way, I didn't mention, are the uh, Anarchies, the Michelin Anarchies, aren't they? Which are sort of, uh, they look a bit off-roady, but really they're on-road tyres. I'd say they're 85% on-road, 15 off, but ideal for the odd green lane, nothing too taxing. So as I say, I might try and give that a little go. Now, one of the comments I got a lot when I did the uh, Tiger 900 reviews last year was about uh, vibrations at higher speeds. So I'm just going to nip up here to a slightly faster road, see if I notice any vibrations when you wind her up a bit. So uh, stick around, stay tuned. Let's give that a whirl. All right, just coming up to a faster bit of road here. Looks like we're going to get some overtaking opportunities. Come on, Mr. Fiat, you can do it. Right, I'll just turn down here. There's a longer bit of faster road. I can hold a sort of steady, sort of motorway type speed. And see what she's like in terms of vibrations. So, let's get her up to 70. Right, sixth gear. Just overtake this car. Right, there we go. 75 miles an hour, so uh, a bit naughty on this road, but I'll be very quick off, sir, I promise. Is there a lot of vibration? No, I wouldn't say there is. I've got a bit of wind buffet on my shoulders. Not in the middle. My helmet is absolutely in this clear air. I don't get any buffet till up there. So my head's in perfectly still air. A little bit of wind resistance on the shoulders. But uh, no, I wouldn't say the vibration, if there's any vibration there in particular. Certainly nothing that would uh, would worry me. I mean, it vibrates no more or less than any other motorcycle I've ridden. So you can strike that off your list as a worry. Clutch on here is nice and light. I suspect it's got one of those slip and assist clutches that I think Triumph pretty much puts on all its bikes these days. All the controls generally are nice and easy to use. Don't really miss a quick shifter, to be honest, on this sort of bike. I mean, what's this? Hello, sir. Africa Twin, if I'm not mistaken. This is the uh, HS2 protest locally here in Wendover. The new train line is going to come right across here with a new bridge. And these Swampy and his friends here are doing a sterling job at trying to uh, put up a bit of defence against it. But uh, I don't want to get political. But uh, I, for one, 
don't really know why we're spending all the money we are on HS2, but that's another story. So yeah, overall, first ride on this bike. It's got all the things that I loved about the uh, Tiger 900. I don't think I'd miss any of those things that it doesn't have. That road tune feels nice to me. I'm not feeling any bad vibrations. I think the colour scheme looks nice. It's got everything that I'd want on a motorbike. I think if you're in the market for a, a sort of a good honest all-rounder at a great price, you do a lot worse than the Tiger 850 Sport, I, I can tell you. Oh, by the way, I just mentioned, if you stick around to the very end of the video after the sort of credit -y bit, after I put my little message up about my sponsors and what have you, I'll do one of my uh, fashion segments because uh, I often get asked what jacket you're really wearing or helmet or whatever, so I'll go through that if you're interested at the very end of the video. Anyway, where was I? Yes, so this bike, I've got it for the next couple of weeks, so I'm going to ride it as much as I possibly can. The weather forecast is varied, I'm quite glad to say. So uh, I should be able to try it in all sorts of conditions, so I'll try it on as many different roads as I can, and then I'll bring you my in-depth review at the end of that period where I'll give you all the lessons I've learned about the bike, not just the good stuff, but the bad stuff too. So uh, if you are interested in the bike, stick around for that. But that's just about it, bar the fashion segment, for this video. Hope you've enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly Cheerio. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for sticking around to the very end of the video so I can take you through my fashion segment, just to save me answering all those comments about what was that jacket you're wearing, all that helmet, whatever. So let's start at the top then. My helmet, this is my Array X4. It's a great helmet. Let me just take it off, in fact. Oh, there we go. That's better. So yeah, this is my Array Tour X4. I've actually got two of these helmets, so I absolutely love these. It's the, my go-to helmet if I'm out on tour on, say, my GS. I just think, uh, well, it's, I mean, they're quite expensive helmets, but they look the business. And with the sunshade, if it is a fairly bright day, they've got, you know, it keeps the sun out of your eyes. It doesn't catch the wind, contrary to what you'd think. Uh, and they have a massive, big uh, visor area, so uh, really good visibility out. I love the RA Tour X4. I'll put a link below uh, to where you can get this, and also you can check out the price. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. They're not particularly cheap, it being an RA, but you get what you pay for with helmets. Okay, there's that one. Right, next up, um, oh, my earplugs. These, again, always wear these when I'm out on tour or indeed just out for a ride as I am today. These are from Custom Fit Guards, uh, the sponsors of the channels actually. If you put, if you have a look down below in the links to this uh, video, you can actually get some money off these. I think it's uh, TMF10 is the code to use and you get 10% off. And the beauty of these is, one, they're custom fitted, so they, they're very comfortable for you. Uh, and the other thing is they'll actually come to your house to take the molds for them now at no extra charge. So you can get 10% off, they'll come to your house and you can get some custom fit molded earplugs. So I recommend those to the house. All right, next on down then, while we're talking about things, my uh, TMF neck buff. This is new for this year. This is uh, £8 from my website, www.themistonflyer.com. As I say, just eight quid. Doubles up as a COVID mask if you still need to do that sort of thing. Uh, the jacket that you will have seen many times before. This is my Richer Arc Gore-Tex jacket. I love this. I wear it all year round. I've got it in its sort of... Um, summer mode at the moment if you like so i've got the internal bit zipped out again relatively expensive because it's gore-tex uh, again can't remember the price off the top of my head i'll put a link below to the richer uh, gore-tex jacket as well it's called the arc jacket um, but yeah works all year round it being gore-tex means that it's properly waterproof you don't need to carry waterproofs as well once you've gone down the old uh, laminated gore-tex route you never go back i have to say right next up something else you've seen a lot my jeans these these are from uh, oxford these are the uh what they call them now, original approved jeans. They, these are absolutely brilliant. I wear these all day, every day, just like normal jeans, but they are for, for motorcycles. They have the proper ratings. These actual ones I've got at the moment are triple A rated, which is incredible. That makes them actually more abrasion resistant than uh, my best leathers that I've got, which is incredible. And then last but not least, if you can see them, oh, those are my TCX Gore-Tex boots. They're called, uh, Again, can't remember what they're called, but I'll put a link below. And just for full disclosure purposes, the links that I put below are to Sports Bike Shop, and they're what are called affiliate links. So if you click on those links and you buy something, I get a little bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you, so just for full disclosure. But having said that, I find Sports Bike Shop, their service is brilliant, their delivery is really quick, their returns is no quibble, I just find them really, really good. I have no uh, affiliation with them other than those links below. Uh, I don't talk to them on any sort of regular basis, so I'm not uh, here to say how good they are, I just find them a very good supply. So links below. Whoop all that stuff. I don't want to go knocking my helmet off. Don't be throwing your helmet around, that's a bad thing. All right, speak to you soon.